And now, the Beakford Corporation, makers of quality tree sap extractors since 2015. The only tree sap extractor you'll ever need proudly presents tonight's presentation of Dr. Francis Stein, Mad Domestic Scientist. This is the story of Dr. Francis Stein, a housewife by day and a mad scientist by midday. As today's episode begins, Frances has prepared breakfast for her husband Harold and the two children, Bobby, age nine, and Sally, age seven, to get them started on their day. Come, children. You don't want to be late for school. Here's your lovingly prepared lunches. Oh, thank you, Mummy. Oh, yes. Thank you, Mummy. And here, Harold. Here's your lovingly prepared lunch. But you must hurry. We don't want you to be late for work. I say, my darling Francis, how you watch over us. Well, your job as a quantity surveyor is such an important one. You have a multitude of clients depending on you to survey the quantities. And I'm just grateful I have a small part in making that happen. Oh, you are such a treasure. Uh, allow me to give you a peck upon the cheek as I go. And so, with her husband and children lovingly and affectionately sent off to work and school, Frances Stein retires to her hidden sewing room, which she has, unbeknownst to her family, secretly converted into a laboratory. Shedding her apron and donning her lab coat, she is joined by her faithful lackey assistant Boris, and she becomes Dr. Francis Stein, mad domestic scientist. And now I can get down to business. Mad domestic scientist business. Boris! My willing and devoted servant, where are you? I am right here, Doctor. And may I say how especially scientifically brilliant you look today? You may. How especially scientifically brilliant you look today, Doctor. And now, Boris, if you're finished fawning over me, which is understandable, we shall get to work. Of course, Doctor. And what, may I ask, will you be attempting to do today? Vacuuming's one of the housewife's most relentless and ceaseless tasks. So much time is devoted to a chore that needs to be repeated on a too regular of a basis. I shall endeavor to create a whole house automated, digitally programmable, high-density, high-intensity vacuum cleaning system. With this creation, I will revolutionize the whole world of vacuuming dirt, dust, and debris. Oh, Doctor, this all sounds quite ambitious. And as usual, I am eager to assist you. Uh, but I am compelled to ask, uh, how will you accomplish this? Boris, my mid-functioning submissive, vacuum cleaners use low air pressure to draw dirt, dust, and debris and trap it in their bags. But the unit must be directly over those things it wishes to vacuum in order to draw them in. By using high air pressure, I will be able to cover more ground in less time and over greater distances. Yes, yes, I see your reasoning, Doctor. Of course, that kind of power could do damage to the valuables in my home, like my paintings, fine china, and even my antique furniture. Oh, yes. Uh, what can be done to protect your valuables, O oh, unequal doctor of mine? I shall install a discerning device, which will allow the unit to distinguish between dirt, dust, and debris, and everything else. Uh, do you think it will work, doctor? Of course it will. You've been in my service all this time, and you don't know that everything I do is a success. Uh, of course, Doctor. How terribly foolish of me. One unit, set centrally in the home, will draw dirt, dust, and other debris from every room, every nook, and every cranny. Uh, what about every crevice and corner? Why, yes, of course. And what about every cavity and cubbyhole? Yes, my faithful minion. And what about every crack and fissure? Boris, my fatigue and minion. Enough is enough. Suffice to say, my high-density, high-intensity vacuum cleaner will go wherever those elements that make for a dirty home can go, no matter how small, no matter how tight, no matter how hidden. Now, let us get to work. And so, Dr. Francis Stein begins experimenting with various suctioning devices. I need higher air pressure, Boris. Higher air pressure. She tests numerous power sources. I need more power, Boris. More power. She analyzes the suitability of several hoses and vents. I need more plastic tubing, Boris. More plastic tubing. 
She carefully programs a dirt, dust and debris discerning device. I need more random access memory, Boris. More random access memory. Finally, her work is done. I've done it, Boris. Created a high density, high intensity vacuum cleaner. Now, tedious, endless bouts of vacuuming my home will finally come to an end. Yes, and, and may I say that you have reason to be quite proud of yourself, Doctor. Yes, you may. And you may also add that you're enraptured by my genius. Oh, you have reason to be quite proud of yourself, Doctor, and I am enraptured by your genius as well. And now, my groveling submissive, we come to the moment when I test my new high-density, high-intensity vacuum cleaner. Hell yes, your laboratory could use a good cleaning, Doctor. Yes. But if for some reason my high-density, high-intensity vacuum cleaner is too powerful, it could cause damage to my equipment. It could disrupt and destroy my various experiments in progress. Oh yes, how wise of you, Doctor. It's no wonder to me that you're the mad domestic scientist and I'm the unquestioningly obedient lackey. What a subserviently correct assessment. And I will reward you by allowing you to display your unquestioning obedience to me. Why, thank you, Doctor. Uh, what must I do? Well, first you must allow me to cover you completely in dirt, dust, and debris. Although I must be careful not to get any on my lovingly washed lab coat. Of course, Doctor, but is all of this necessary? It's science, Boris. Of course it's necessary. You should be honored. Oh, you were right, Doctor. Uh, how unappreciative of me. Now that you're thoroughly covered, I want you to stand directly in front of my high-density, high-intensity vacuum cleaner. Uh, yes, Doctor. I will now supply power to my new creation. I will see if it does indeed remove all of the dirt, dust, and debris from you while leaving you untouched. It's working, Boris! It's working! All of the dust and dirt and debris is being vacuumed off you! This is wonderful! Simply wonderful! Wait, Boris? Boris, where are you? Did you get vacuumed into the machine? I am afraid so, Doctor. I fear your high-density, high-intensity vacuum cleaner didn't discern me as something valuable. Don't understand. Oh, wait, of course. The problem wasn't with my high-density, high-intensity vacuum cleaner. It's with you. Uh, me? Oh, Doctor, please forgive my incompetence. The discerning device I installed inside is programmed to recognize valuable things like paintings and fine china and antique furniture. I'm afraid you're not valuable enough to make the grade. Well, that must be it, Doctor. At least the problem wasn't with my work, but rather with your... valuelessness. Uh, can you get me out of here, Doctor? Not now, I'm afraid. It's getting late. My husband and my children will be arriving home soon. I must get dinner ready. I promised Bobby to help him with his coin collection tonight, and I promised Sally to help her with her stamp collection tonight. And I promised Harold to help him with his frayed knot collection tonight. Uh, but Doctor, what about me? I fear you have no one to blame but yourself. If you possessed more value, you wouldn't have gotten yourself vacuumed up like you did. I fear you'll have to spend the night in there. Oh, yes, Doctor. You know what is best. And now I must attend my domestic duties and await tomorrow when I can again fulfill my destiny as Dr. Francis Stein, mad domestic scientist. Ha 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 ha!